This is going to be a good run here with a bust a piston. We're traveling with Sam King. Done a little bit of uh, trials, I think, in his time, and he's you know he's still still uh, still, still learning. learning. <laughs> yeah. Always learning. That's the beautiful thing about motorsport is if, if it ever gets boring, you're just not thinking hard enough. Yeah, that's, that's ultra low sulfur diesel fuel only. I don't know. I'm a big fan of the high sulfur content. Ah, thirsty for the diesel. A 302 stroke in a tiny little light bike like this. And then it takes about three or four hours to charge it. And so what do you charge it with? Just a charger. Like it comes with a charger. I would love to come ride with you. I've got enough bikes for you. Cool. Should be a good day. Oh, you know, I can't think of a better day than uh, nice sunshine and Mount Ida and Silver Creek. And we're going to get a get a rookie here to <laughs> tell us a little bit about uh, himself. He says he's going to going to ride the motorbike up here on Mount Ida. That's where we're going. Is it? I it was Silver Creek. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the flanks of Mount Ida oh, on the on the south side, but well, it's I'm... all good. And and we're talking here with Sam King, and I don't really know much about you, Sam. Tell us about yourself. What what do you what should people know about you that they may not know? So I love motorcycles is probably the first thing I should say. I'm basically obsessed with riding motorcycles of all all disciplines, but my main background is the sport of moto trials. So since I was eight years old, I've been involved in motor trials competition. Uh, by the time I was 14, I was traveling through Europe and competing in Spanish rounds and going to world rounds and things like that. So lots of experience in trials and I still very much love it. Nowadays, I also do quite a bit of enduro riding, snow biking, and more recently been uh, doing some sledding too, thanks to Carl Cusa Mountain Park. In all seriousness, it is a really fun sport. It is, I would say, one of the most skillful motorsports that's out there. It's one of the smaller sports and or for motorcycles. And I would say part of the reason for that is because it is quite difficult and uh, it's very enjoyable, but to get to a high level, you have to put in a lot of hours. It's not based about speed. It's based around balance, basically. So you've scored a little bit like golf. So the more mistakes you make, the more points you will accumulate. So if you put a foot down, you get a point. Uh, if you crash, you're going to get five points. So the idea, the perfect score at the end of the day would be to be on zero, or we call it. Pretty, pretty small, but yeah. The, There's the... even sidecar murder trials too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, just I'm just telling you right now, I will not be your monkey if you if you that decide is, to, to oh get into man, that. That is terrifying. I tried to do it once and I, I hated the feeling of not being in control and going up obstacles. It was scary. <laughs> yes. You know your 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 origins, your your roots. As you grow up as a child, how how did you how did you go that route? What what attracted you to it? So it's a pretty funny story, actually. My dad was always into motorcycles. Never really too much competition, but he was brought up on an acreage, and just his dad, my grandpa, always had motorcycles. He was an engineer for Ford, so he loved anything mechanical but they always had motorcycles to get around the property and use them more as tools and dad got into a bit of trail riding uh, for fun as when he was uh, a bit younger like before i just so happened to be that there was a small mini bike track as well so i would be able to putt around on the track while dad was out fighting around on a trials bike and then eventually just with enough laps going around the mini bike track i kind of I don't want to say I got bored of it, but I was definitely interested by the trials obstacles. So I started following my dad around and just uh, basically doing trials on my on my small kid's bike. And after that, dad saw that I was interested and that I had some natural ability. So he thought he would get me into trials by the time I was eight years old. And 
that's when I got my first Beta 80 and Beta is a Italian manufacturer and it's a beautiful bike they're, they're actually still around those bikes they haven't really changed much but they, don't, they really don't need to they're just a great great all-round bike for, for kids you can get them in a small wheel bike or a big wheel bike and my dad got me the big wheel which I think was a good move and uh, I remember that it, it was kind of a bigger bike for me at the time that I'd, I could kickstart it myself but I had to have it on the side stand to get up on the <laughs> yeah. peg and use the one leg to kickstart it but uh, uh, so that's how I fell into the sport of trials and I think I was 12 when I got my first national title in, uh, in the, I think it was under 13 juniors so definitely got heavily into the trials competition and really from as, as as long as I can remember, I, all I wanted to do was ride motorcycles. And that was basically just from influence from my dad. He would go to work every day on his Ducati and I could hear him coming home from blocks away. And it, I think part of that was probably what started my love for it. And then dad would take me to the Phillip Island um, MotoGP track and we'd watch guys like Mick Dewan going around the track. and. I remember just hanging on the side of the fence, just crying because I wanted to be out there so badly. I wanted the motorcycle so bad. And uh, yeah, so really, that's what my whole life has been about, is just being on two wheels. And I think that's never going to change. Quickly, just stop for a sec here. Road deactivated. Oh no, we're going to drive off the edge, of the, the edge of the cliff here. Coming to the edge of the world. Yes. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Nobody can bust a piston like me. So, so that's so that, so that's how the name came about and yeah, so I I go by bust a piston. So now you could be you could be a, a king piston for, for for this ride. Well, I think that would fit. I like it. Yeah. Okay, Sam, your your new rap name is King Piston. So for all the people that are interested at home in trials because it comes down to so much about your feel on your controls what the back brake is really we're using it all the time so our boots are super super flexible to give us maximum feel so they don't have a lot, ton of ankle support but we're not doing a lot of high speed stuff in trials anyways yes oh boy here we go <laughs> wish me luck bust a battery oh because when you take this off it resets so uh, it goes yes. back to the white mode oh, okay. so you're in blue so you're live. Tiki Dog's gonna love. Front brake's on the right, just like a normal bike. Rear brake is by the foot, just like a normal bike. He's got good balance, this guy. I have to call him Buster Balance. Oh. Pull the clutch in. It's got, it's got a touchy brake, that's for sure. And touchy throttle. <laughs> so if you're ever getting out of hand, you can just pull the clutch in. Yes. And that way you're not going to take off. So yeah. this is something that I always, <laughs> just so the people at home know, I do uh, um, clinics as well. So one thing that's always a good idea in trials is to always have a finger on each control. Yes. That way if you ever did get out of hand, it doesn't matter where the throttle is, you can just pull the clutch in. Yes. Yep. Amazing. This is really neat. This <laughs> yeah. is really neat. Yeah. Pretty much works just just like a normal gas powered trials bike. Yeah. This is really neat. <laughs> Alright, so we got Buster. He's just been trying out the electric motion trials bike. Now he's trying out the gas powered beta. Yeah, what? so this so this is a normal uh gas powered bike with normal shifting so one forward gear and six reverse gear <laughs> he looks a little bit more comfortable on the gas powered bike i'd say and that's tiki dog she absolutely loves motorcycles favorite thing in the world to do is to follow us up trails it's all good yeah <laughs> this, is, this is awesome they're just so light yeah yeah. Light and responsive with the throttle and with the brakes. Yes. So you can see how this would kind of change your 
your outlook on riding mountains because it's, it's almost like the tractor of the motorcycles. Yeah. It's, it's not designed for speed, but it's going to crawl up just about anything. Yes. And the gear shifter is purposely built that far away because we're doing such dramatic movements right. on the bike that our foot could hit it accidentally if it was closer. Yes. Yeah, when I first went to shift it, it's like, oh, there's no shifter on it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you, need, you need a size 18 boot to be able to reach it. That is amazing. Pretty different. It's yes, a, it, it is. It's a foreign feeling for people that have never tried it before, yeah. but once you get comfortable with it, the confidence is, is pretty yeah. incredible. Yeah, so we're on the trail with Sam King. Well, I guess that would be King Busta and his dog Tiki. And we're gonna head up to some boulders up here and see what Sam can do with the trials machine. But this is just a great day. Gonna be a little hot and dusty, sunny and warm already, but just such a beautiful area up here at Silver Creek to ride in. And yeah, the, uh, the dog here is, you know, gonna be struggling a bit today. But having fun and very smart dog. You know, anytime we got to where there was a single track trail that that scooted off with this one, Tiki would be right up there. She knows that single track is where it's at. You got her. Yes. Tricky. <laughs> Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, the loose rocks. Oh, I'm I'm good. Yep. Yeah. See what I mean? It's not Lo too much in the loose stuff. Loose stuff. Yeah.
silent but deadly. Yes. And they certainly blur the lines between that and an electric bicycle. <laughs> you could I, probably get away with that on most trails. What I say is it's 2023, these foot pegs identify as pedals. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Seems to work for everything else. So. Yeah. <laughs> now this is almost like valet service where, you know, you're, you're loading and unloading the bike. Let the young guys And uh, Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Thank you for the local knowledge. That was a good day, God. Thank you. Ah, Shana Buster. <laughs> Buster, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take me a minute to get used to that. Yes. You sure you don't want me to grab it or stick it into gear? Look at that. Oh, well, this is this is great. So, um, so yeah. So the uh, the the first ride here with uh, with young Sam it went went all right. He, uh, you know, gave us some stuff for the camera, and it was a really super day. It was a nice little ride, and yeah. hopefully right. we got some good stuff here. So had some fun. Definitely going to go back and do some grooming to the the area that we want to ride. But, yes. Uh, move some of the loose rock and make some make some lines. Yes. Just to know that that area is there is awesome. So thanks very much, Buster. Thank you very much. And Sam, that is a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That was fun. <laughs>